Hi, this is Dr. Perry Carpenter. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join me on today's program. Today's program is taken right out of the hypertrophy files. And the hypertrophy files are part of a series of lectures that I produce for you doctors uh, out of the basic science series for chiropractic continuing education. And today's program uh, is approved for six hours of continuing education in the general category uh, by the Board of Chiropractic Examiners. So uh, welcome to the program and thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy today's program uh, quite a bit and that you get a lot out of it. The focus of today's program is going to be on two words and these are two words that I tell almost every one of my patients on almost every single visit that I have with them. And uh, these are some profound words and uh, you don't have to say really much more than these two words to your patients. And uh, if you're able to get a head nod from your patients uh, after you repeat this mantra uh, to them, you'll know that you're doing the very best thing that you can for them. And this applies to you as well. Uh, today's program is entitled Exercise Recommendations for Chiropractors and Their Patients. And so today's program is directed, first of all, doctors at you, because uh, I know uh, what your life is like and I know what it's like to be a chiropractor because I am a chiropractor and I've been a chiropractor for 27 years and I know that being a chiropractor is, uh, is a physical job. It's, uh, it's a physically demanding, it's a heavy lifting job. So we have those physical demands on us also uh, as respected health care uh, authorities we also serve as role models to our patients so it's important that we practice what we preach and so I direct this program first and foremost to you doctor and then also uh, to your patients and the mantra and the two words that I constantly re reinforce both to myself and to my patients and, and that I want to impart to you and your patients is to up muscle up muscle it's the philosophy of this program and it's my uh, sincere opinion that we need to continually focus on increasing the muscle mass content of our body and this is regardless of age in fact uh, as we age through our uh, 30s 40s 50s 60s 70s 80s <laughs> I don't know where you lie on that spectrum, but uh, speaking for myself, uh, I'm probably at the midpoint of that spectrum and, and inching perhaps <laughs> slightly past the midpoint of that spectrum. And as we do age, it becomes even more important to focus on upping the muscle mass content of our bodies. So that's the whole purpose of our uh, program today is to learn how to preserve muscle mass and how to promote and grow new muscle mass regardless uh, of our age, regardless of our physical condition, or regardless of any limitations that we may think that we have uh, that prevent us from uh, doing just that, from building new muscle. So this is called the hypertrophy files and this is one of several lessons in the hypertrophy files which is a series of exercise, dietary, and lifestyle techniques uh, designed to promote muscle hypertrophy. So today we're going to talk about lesson number one from the hypertrophy files. And today we're going to focus on some exercise techniques involving and focusing on three very narrow principles. We're going to narrow this entire concept down to three simple, effective, and extremely powerful techniques that you and your patients can implement right away that will tremendously improve and enhance uh, the benefits that you get from standard exercise, whether those be performed in a health club or whether those be performed at home uh, with simple and inexpensive implements. And those three simple principles that we're going to focus on in this program include number one the biarticular muscles, the eccentric muscle actions, and the pre-stretch principle. 
and uh, of course we'll elaborate over the next six hours uh, on these three principles. So if you're ready with me, uh, I'd like you to grab your handout materials for your note-taking uh, benefit. Grab you a snack and a drink and uh, get ready to get down to some brass tacks of anatomy, physiology, and the science uh, behind muscle hypertrophy. Uh, what about the pull-up exercise? Well, conventional pull-ups uh, may have some limitations to them, but uh, I'm going to show you some modifications that make them uh, a much better exercise that uh, comply with our big three. They are multi-articular. Uh, they, they do not necessarily allow for a pre-stretch, although they allow for a pretty good stretch, uh, especially in the bottom position. They do lend themselves to the application of accentuated eccentrics, and I'll show you how uh, that would be performed. So here we have our push-up, uh, I'm sorry, our pull-up station. And what you're going to see is the subject is going to perform pull-ups with the addition of weight around his waist. Now the weight around the waist is going to be neutralized <coughs> by assistance given through uh, the machine. And as the subject reaches the top part of the range of motion, meaning he reaches a point of active insufficiency and can no longer go any higher, then the assistance from the weight machine itself will be removed and the subject will resist the additional load with an accentuated eccentric contraction. So let's roll the video here while I narrate. Okay, the subject has an additional load around the waist. That's a 25-pound plate. <clears throat> and the weight assistance stack is set at approximately 25 pounds so that that will relieve uh, the effect of the 25 pounds additional weight, at least on the concentric portion of the contraction. So here we go. Good stuff. Subject gets all the way up at active insufficiency, meaning a point at which he can go no higher, and resists the downward eccentric contraction. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the machine assists on the concentric contraction while the subject performs the eccentric contraction 100% on his own. So he, you can see here that he's pulling up with approximately his body weight. He's lowering himself with his body weight plus an additional 25 pounds, an accentuated eccentric contraction. This produces tremendous hypertrophic effect and gives tremendous additional value for the same time increment that would be used performing the pull-up exercise anyway. So uh, uh, an excellent modification uh, of the pull-up exercise. Okay, what about uh, the dumbbell pullover exercise? Well, the dumbbell pullover exercise, for those of you who have been exercising in the gym for any length of time, uh, know this as, a, as an old school exercise, going back uh, all the way back to the Steve Reeves and Charles Atlas days. Well, how can the dumbbell pullover exercise be modified to contribute uh, uh, to greater hypertrophy and to comply with our requirements of multi-articularity, uh, pre-stretch principle, and accentuated eccentrics. Well, let's demonstrate the dumbbell pullover exercise. <laughs> That'd be a gate disturbance. <laughs> so here is a video that demonstrates the dumbbell pullover exercise. It seems like it's uh, disoriented right now, but it straightens itself out in just a moment. 
And what you're going to see is the subject is going to be lifting a 100-pound dumbbell. And through the concentric phase uh, of the range of motion, beginning all the way back at passive insufficiency, uh, through the concentric phase, he's going to be lifting 100 pounds. When he reaches a point of active insufficiency, then we add additional load to accentuate uh, the eccentric portion of the range of motion, at which point he will be lowering down uh, 125 pounds uh, compared to 100 pounds during the concentric action. Okay, so let's roll the video. Oh, one more. Be careful on this one. Okay, so that's a 100 pound dumbbell with the addition of 25 pounds on the eccentric phase. We get to active, uh, passive insufficiency there and the additional load is removed for 100 pounds of concentric phase. So that's 125 and 100. Significantly increasing the hypertrophic benefit of this exercise and giving tremendous amount of additional benefit for the same amount of time that it would take to perform a conventional dumbbell pullover exercise. Now for special populations this exercise would be modified first of all by manipulating range of motion and second of all by manipulating uh, the amount of weight used on both the concentric and eccentric phases of the exercise. Overall, an excellent exercise uh, to incorporate uh, regularly in your hypertrophy training program. Now, along with accentuated eccentrics, one of the uh, concepts that you want to employ that's a new twist as applied to eccentric exercises is an idea uh, called progress the negative. Progress the negative. And we're all familiar, and I know you're familiar with progressive resistance exercise where you try to progress the amount lifted over a period of time as your uh, previously lifted weights become easier and easier to lift, you then move on to the next weight increment. Well, this applies the same principle uh, and applies it uh, to the negative portion or the eccentric portion uh, of the range of motion. So I'll, I'll list for you here a sample progression uh, of progressing the eccentric uh, on the dumbbell pullover exercise. So imagine beginning the dumbbell pullover exercise with a 90 pound dumbbell with an additional 10 pounds added to accentuate the eccentric portion of the range of motion. Your client or yourself would then proceed to perform 10 repetitions in that manner. Now on the next set you could progress the dumbbell to 100 pounds Meanwhile, using your same additional load of 10 pounds on the accentuated eccentric, and this would increase both the concentric and eccentric uh, loads compared to the prior set. Now, on your third set, you could continue to progress the eccentric portion of the range of motion if you found yourself at your near maximum for the 10 repetitions at 100 pounds you could then increase the eccentric portion of the load by using 20 additional pounds of eccentric load. And on your third set, you could use an additional 25 pounds to accentuate the eccentric load, meanwhile keeping the concentric portion of the load uh, consistent at 100 pounds. And what you didn't see on the prior videotape was just that. We simply showed you uh, the final set where the subject was lifting 100 pounds on the concentric portion of the range of motion and lowering 125 pounds uh, on the eccentric portion of the range of motion. 
So this idea of progress the negative or progress the accentuated portion of the range of motion uh, can be and should be applied uh, to many of uh, the exercises that we're going through here. In conclusion, uh, this is Dr. Perry Carpenter. I hope you enjoyed this program. Uh, now you have a 20 question uh, examination that I need you to complete and either fax or email back to me. My fax number is on the top of the examination form and just as soon as I receive your examination form uh, I will provide you with a certificate of completion that you can use for your Board of Chiropractors uh, continuing education credit. For now, I want to leave you with uh, the website uh, for chiropractors, which is entitled ezchiropracticceu.com. We're always coming up with new programs, so check the website uh, frequently for new programs designed to help you uh, succeed as a chiropractor. Again, Dr. Perry Carpenter wishing you great success. If there's ever anything I can do to help you, feel free to call. Again, thanks for being with me on this program and best of success.